Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video we're looking at a story, a very, uh, very new story, that honestly is still as, uh, as much of a mystery today as it was when it first, you know, uh, appeared in the papers over a month ago. And that is the story of the Murdoch family. Murdoch. 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 Paul Murdoch. Members of the Murdoch family. A dynasty in South Carolina. Seriously, when researching this one, I had to make sure it wasn't the latest HBO show, Succession 2. The Murdochs were, and still are, a, a dynasty, right? Which may or may not have some dark uh, secrets, which could have ended in... Let's give it a go. Nestled deep in the heart of South Carolina in rural low country lies a small unincorporated community called Islandton. It's made up of, of maybe a hundred people. You got your trailer parks and million dollar estates, both in this place. It's almost two hours from the state capital of Columbia, and it's residing in a very remote place. You know, uh, the kind of place that unless you have a reason to go there, you're not gonna. The reason we're gonna is quite uh, dramatic. Islington is home to the powerful, wealthy family, the Murdoch family. The Murdochs have been a presence in the area for more than 100 years, beginning when Randolph Murdoch Sr. was elected Chief Prosecutor in 1920. And from there, the Murdochs were names to know in Southern South Carolina law, as generation after generation would become prosecutors, gathering up a few De Niro's along the way. The reign of the Murdochs working as 14th Circuit Solicitors, essentially, they were essentially the you know, state's attorney, ended in 2005 when the not senior, not junior, the third retired. However, the family were still involved in the family business, being law up until this very day. Unfortunately, probably a little bit more than they would like to be. As the year 2021 began, the Murdoch family were made up of, hey, here's the family tree. Randolph the third, working for the family law firm, his sons, John, Randolph the fourth, worked in law, Alex worked in law, Alex's wife Maggie and their two sons, Buster and Paul. In the autumn, the family would go hunting and then during the summers they would spend it on their 17-foot boat. The family business was the law firm Peters, Murdoch, Parker, Ellsroth and Detrick. Quite an influential one. A lot of Murdochs to remember. Unfortunately, it won't stay that way. But as you can see, you know, they were the big dogs in town. So when Murder and Murdoch are put beside each other in the news, it gets attention. Their home, or rather one of them, is a hunting lodge known as Moselle on Moselle Road, a massive 1,770 acre property. And, uh, well, all eyes turned there on the 7th of June, 2021. On that day, June the 7th, a 911 call was made. It was made by Alex. A police officer from the Culleton County Sheriff's Office arrived about 15 minutes later and found at the scene that Moselle Hunting Lodge were Maggie, Alex's wife, 52 years old, and Paul Murdoch, Alex's son, 22 years old. Both had been shot to death. They were outside the house on the property near the dog kennels. A murder mystery playing out behind the gates of this hunting lodge here in Colleton County as one of the most high profile families in the Low Country are mourning the loss of a son and his mother. 
The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division and Colleton County Sheriff's investigators have been on scene all day and night looking into a gruesome discovery on Moselle Road in Islandton late last night. Detectives were called in just after 10 p.m. where they found two bodies inside, 22-year-old Paul Murdaugh and his mother, 52-year-old Maggie Murdaugh. SLED tells News 3 both had at least one gunshot wound. According to several sources, their bodies found by Maggie Maggie's husband and Paul's father, Richard Alexander Murdaugh. Now, Paul Murdaugh had been in trouble with the law before facing criminal. So, who would uh, want to do this? Powerful people make enemies. When you ask a question like that, the list gets long quickly. But this was pretty brutal what happened to them. And you know, I mean, Powerful people, prosecutors, they would make enemies, but why would you go after a prosecutor's wife and son? I mean, I could say they've never done nothing to nobody. I'd be lying. Because maybe the Murdochs had some skeletons in their closet. Now, here is three of them. At the time of his death, 22 year old Paul was facing a courtroom himself. But not like his daddy, his granddaddy, and his daddy before him. No. No, he was facing felony boat-related charges. Mike, explain. Okay. In 2019, a 19-year-old woman was killed on a boat in South Carolina. Murdoch boat. What bridge is it? Paul, what bridge is this? Oh, what? 911, where's your emergency? Hello? Police fire into this. Hello? We're in a boat crash on Arthur Street. Okay, are you in the water or are you. We're, we're in the boat. Okay. We have someone missing. There's six people on board. They currently have one missing. It's uh, one female. Uh, that's all the description I have of her right now. Evidently, the girl was sitting on her boyfriend's lap when they hit the bridge at a high rate of speed, and now she's missing. Mallory Beach was killed on the 24th of February, 2019, while on the Murdoch family boat. Paul Murdoch seemingly crashed the boat near Paris Island, South Carolina. He had been near drink sailing. Him, Mallory Beach, few of the friends had been out on the boat all day until it got into night drinking, partying. Paul Murdoch was driving the boat apparently before he crashed that night. He was hitting the others. He was demanding that only he could drive the boat. He's acting like a real. Hate to speak ill of the dead, but kind of an asshole. The boat also didn't have working lights. They were using like flashlights. There were six people in the boat when it crashed at about 1 a.m., all under 21 years old at the time. The boat crashed into a piling at Archer's Creek Bridge. They were all thrown out of it, swam to shore, all apart from Mallory. Three days of searching, still no sign of a teenager thrown overboard over the weekend. 19-year-old Mallory Beach hasn't been seen since a boat she and five friends were riding on hit a piling in Archer's Creek. Rescue crews from Beaufort County and Paris Island have been combing the waters in and around the area. Paris Island even shut down its firing range so searchers would be safe. She was found seven days later. A Port Royal Police report states an officer observed all five were grossly intoxicated. Beaufort County deputies eventually determined one of two boys were driving, Paul Murdoch or Connor Cook. Both only 20 years old, neither breathalyzed on the scene. It seems like the investigation into this was a shit show from the start, from Jump Street. And of course, of course, some of the investigators had ties, you know, they're in cahoots maybe with the Murdoch family. Paul also wasn't given a sobriety test uh, at the hospital that night, something that was allegedly prevented uh, by, the, by his, his dad. It was two months after the incident before Paul was charged with three felony boating under the influence charges. Apparently there was some confusion as to who was driving the boat at the time, but um, oh uh, yeah, one sheriff's deputy who said it was Paul driving the boat 
He just happened to get fired shortly afterwards for alleged drugs charges. In May 2019, Paul pled not guilty to the charges. He is presumed innocent. He's pleading not guilty. Um, and uh, as a result, he should be afforded a, 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 a release on his own recognizance because there is no showing uh, of any of the criteria which would affect that. He never spent any time in jail, and the criminal case was in no rush to reach the courtroom. And apparently before he was he was shot dead back in June of 2021, he'd received he'd received numerous uh, online death uh, death threats related, you know, to that boating boating incident. So we can see how a lot of people will be looking towards what happened back in February 2019 when what happened in June 2021 happened. Now I must say though, everybody who was on the boat that night back in February, they were all DNA tested after the shooting in June, and uh, the, one of them, apparently, was tested for gunshot residue on his hand. I mean, the police, obviously, first thing you're going to look at is, did anybody who was on the boat that night have anything to do with killing Paul and his mother, Maggie? Next, in 2015, a young man, 19-year-old Stephen Smith, was found dead. His body was found in the middle of Sandy Run Road on the 8th of July at about 4 a.m., roughly 15 minutes from Moselle. It was back then determined to be a hit and run, right? Uh, but Stephen Smith's mother had some... She didn't think it was that, was it though? Well, Stephen had a massive head wound. His face was covered in blood. His right shoulder was partially dislocated. He had cuts and bruises on his right hand, but his clothing was untouched. His car was found three miles away. Weirdly enough, the gas cap was like unscrewed and hanging off the side of the car. So at the time, it was yeah, theorized while well, he had been driving, he had run out of gas and decided to walk home when he got hit by a car or a truck or something. What's bizarre though is that they really couldn't tell how he died. First, they said, you know, it was a car, he got knocked down. Then they said shooting for some weird reason, but they found nothing related to either him being knocked down by a car or being shot, or, you know, no gun, no bullets, no tire marks, no car shit, as if he had been hit by a car. Eventually, it was ruled a hit and run, something the detectives disagreed on. But the files I obtained through Freedom of Information Act request also show confusion concerning how Stephen Smith died. Look at this. In initial reports, an officer who went to the crime scene said he, quote, saw no vehicle debris, skid marks, or injuries consistent with someone being struck by a vehicle. In other notes, one investigator writes that his captain called him and said this appeared to be a homicide, and Sled was taking over, writing, quote, I was advised there was a possible gunshot wound to the victim's head. Then an investigator starts to dig into the autopsy, showing Smith died from a hit and run. He then gets in a heated conversation with the doctor who performed the autopsy. A timeline helps illustrate the confusion over Smith's cause of death. Again, on July 8th, an investigator writes the victim may have died from a gunshot wound. On July 22nd, the investigator approaches the doctor and asks if the victim could have died from a baseball bat rather than a car. The doctor told the investigator what killed Smith was his job to figure out. On August 18th, the coroner says he doesn't agree with the doctor's autopsy. But when the investigator goes to talk to the doctor again, he learns she was fired. Others who were there when the autopsy was performed told the investigator there wasn't any mention of a hit and run when they were doing the autopsy. Stephen was sober, clear-headed at the time of his death. He wasn't like, you know, daydreamer or something like that. Who, you know, he was aware of his surroundings at all times. He wasn't the type who would just walk in front of a car or something. Now, Stephen was openly gay and he was well-liked in town. He was studying nursing at the time of his death. So how does this link to the Murdochs? Now, there have been rumors going around in town, this is all unconfirmed, but that maybe Buster, Paul's brother, was intimately involved with Stephen Smith. And throughout the investigation, tips will come in, the Murdoch name came up again and again and again. However, you know, after a time, the case would go cold until, get a load of this, the murder, the double homicide of Paul Murdoch and Maggie Murdoch. The investigation into Stephen Smith would be reopened after that. Weird timing. Well, the authorities came out and said, uh, well, and I quote, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, who are handling the double homicide, reopened the investigation into Stephen Smith. 
based on information gathered during the course of the double murder investigation of Paul and Maggie Murdoch. What it is they found, we'll have to wait and see. And finally, in December 2018, Alex Murdoch paid a settlement to the Satterfield estate. Now, who are they? It appears, and well, it's kind of unconfirmed as to what her actual relationship to the Murdochs was, but a woman named Gloria Satterfield, 57 years old, she, she may have worked as a housekeeper for the Murdochs when she had a trip and fall and died on Murdoch property. This happened back in February 2018. What exactly happened has never really come out, but Alex Murdoch paid to her estate and her, you know, kids half a million dollars. A nice uh, chunk of change. If there was enough there for a civil suit and he had to pay out half a million dollars, there's, well, there's never been any mention of a criminal one, so we don't really know what happened. Apparently, she loved the Murdochs like family. Others disagreed with that statement. So yeah, that is three mysterious deaths linked to the one family, the Murdoch family, who then were, had, had a double homicide. In this one, there's a lot of, <laughs> we're rich, so, uh, go fuck yourself. So, back to June 2021 and the murders of Paul and Maggie. Shell casings were discovered at the scene, and it seems that two weapons may have been used a shotgun to kill Paul, and an assault rifle to kill Maggie. They were shot to death 30 to 60 minutes before they were found, sometime between 9 and 9.30 that night. Apparently the day after the murders, Maggie's phone was found uh, along a rural road somewhere in Islington, as if it had been ditched maybe by the killer or killers. It also seems very likely that the investigators discovered DNA related to the killer, because remember, they tested the other people involved in a boat crash, so they were obviously trying to do a comparison. It's also been rumoured that a weapon was discovered at the scene, belonging to the killer, either the shotgun or the assault rifle, or maybe another one. Two vehicles were also found at the scene, one towed back to the lab for evidence, bit of a snoop around, what kind of vehicle, I don't know. They haven't said. Alex, by the way, you know, the dad who found them, uh, he was ruled out. He didn't kill his wife and son. He was actually with his, his dying father at the hospital at the time. See, a couple of days after the murders, Randolph III passed away from natural causes. It's understood he had been ill for some time. The Murdoch family since announced there is a $100,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest in this double homicide. This morning, members of the Murdoch family speaking for the first time since their brother Alec Murdoch found his 22-year-old son Paul and his wife Maggie shot to death outside their South Carolina home last week. I got a call from, from Alec Monday night. And as soon as I had the phone, I knew something was wrong. There's information, however big or however small it is. Did they have any enemies? I really don't know of any enemies. You hear all this talk on the, you know, social media with regard to Paul, but I don't know of anybody no. that would truly, that would truly be an enemy or truly want to harm them. The Murdochs telling us Paul had been receiving threats from strangers, people they say they didn't know. Were they, you know, violent threats? I didn't think it was a credible threat. If it was, I would have tried to do something or notified someone. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, maybe I made a mistake. I see words like dynasty used and power. And I don't know exactly how people use those words, but we're just regular people, and we're hurting just like they would be hurting if this had happened to them. To date, though, that's, um, that's all we really know. Whether this will ever be solved, that's a big question mark. No suspects have been publicly identified, no people of interest, no leads. In fact, the police are very, they're very zipped the lip on this entire case. As I said, with all those skeletons in the closet, good reason. Reports that have been released are heavily redacted, as you can imagine. 
So information is slowly trickling out at the moment. And so, as I said from there, questions remain. Was Paul the intended target? Was it related to that boat crash where Mallory Beach was killed because he was drink boating? My, it, it, it's scary. It's a murder mystery, Eric. Uh, but uh, when you connect the dots here, the fact that uh, Paul had been charged in this, uh, the death of Mallory Beach, the authorities there in South Carolina are trying to see if there's a nexus between that incident and the death of uh, Paul uh, Murtaugh. Uh, what we do know is that Paul Murtaugh allegedly was shot with a shotgun and his mother, Maggie Murtaugh, was shot with an assault weapon. He'd also been receiving quite a number of uh, threats before, well, he, his uncle said they hadn't been taking him seriously. Was Maggie then killed because she was just there? Why were two guns used? Uh, were there two shooters or one guy came in like commando? Let the record show, by the way, pretty much everything I've said is subject to change. Uh, the police, like I said, have been releasing jack shit. It's been a very slow trickle of information out there. There's a lot of rumors and conjecture. Even the three previous deaths, which are linked to the family, and are all very mysterious, are all sort of up in the air. There is a giant mystery surrounding this entire case, one I, I hope we get to the bottom of, but we may never. There's enough twists and turns here to, to rank up a shitload of based on TV shows and movies. There's a lot of uh, theories out there, as you can imagine. I'm not going to get into them. Um, I think it'd be kind of wrong to do so. But uh, hopefully we'll have more than theories soon. But one thing does feel real. The Murdochs, with all of their things going on, it seemed like they had free reign in town. You know, they were above the law. Good old boys, you know? Evidently someone disagreed. It's still tragic. It doesn't make any of this right. But um, in this case... Everything is wrong. Thank you so much for watching. I really, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with me. Here, go on. Uh, I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. Until then, please take care of yourselves. I love you. Mike out.